Hello and welcome to the Unit 2 Personal Essay Screencast. This screencast will talk about the personal essay, give you some more instruction on what I'm looking for in this essay, and hopefully get you excited about writing the essay. So a personal essay is a story from your life or an experience um, that's connected to a larger idea. So you're going to use that story or experience to connect to a larger theme or issue. And the theme or issue is the most prevalent, prevalent thing in the essay. For example, I had a student um, write an essay about her time working in the prison. And she connected her time working in the prison to the feeling of emptiness that prisoners have and how they kind of become soulless. So the background was the prison and her actual working there, but the theme of the essay was the prisoners and how they felt um, throughout this time that they were incarcerated. So a personal essay is not just a story although the story can provide the framework, like the example I was just showing you, how she provided framework was she actually took the reader through the prison. So it was like she started at the main doors and walked you through each of the parts of the prison. Um, it's not an in-your-face essay, so it's not like a traditional research essay where you up front say, this is what I'm going to write about. Um, it's not a book report or research paper. So the personal essay structure um, should show meaning between seemingly unconnected events. So like I was giving you the example of the prisoners, um, working in a prison doesn't necessarily mean that you're having a connection to those prisoners and their feelings and their inner person. Um, and in your personal essay, you should also create movement in two directions, both horizontally and vertically. So first, you're going to select an experience in your life in which you can draw meaning from. So I would encourage you to do some free writing, um, maybe just jot down some ideas of things that have had an impact on you. Um, your experience will be the horizontal movement, um, and it will generally begin and end the essay. So the horizontal movement is what's going to carry the reader throughout the essay. Um, next, you should identify the central question or theme that you wish to explore in your essay. Um, exploring the question or theme provides the vertical movement. So the, the story is going to be that background movement that's going to move you along through the pages. And then the theme is going to be something that pops up throughout that story. So some questions you can use to help you identify vertical elements that can add support and structure to horizontal narrative could be like, why was that experience significant to you? Have you had other experiences that are in some way related to the one you have decided to explore? What ideas connect those experiences? And how has this experience influenced your personality or your feelings? So you should think of your essay like a bridge. You need to get from, um, point A to point B, and in order to do that, you have to have support. So you can't just have a bridge going over a big body of water without something in the middle holding it up. So the horizontal story is what moves across the bridge, so you're going across the bridge with your story. And then um, the supports come in with those vertical elements, and those would be the theme. So to achieve a rhythm and harmony in your essay as it moves horizontally, find logical places in your narrative to attach those vertical pillars. So essays are going to differ on how you do this um, in both the length and the horizontal movement and also the frequency and height of your vertical supports. Some essays are largely narrative with subtle vertical movements and others may include a very brief narrative that introduces a long and elaborate treatment of the central idea. So you could begin your essay with your story, move into something else the larger theme and then end it with your story as well. Okay, so beginning and ending your essay. How can the experience you're using as a horizontal movement provide a beginning and an ending? So um, you could tell half of the story at the beginning, then tell the rest of the story at the end, or maybe you want to relate the entire story at the beginning of your essay and then bring in some echoing or mirroring of certain elements throughout the story at, or at the end. Or you could select one important word or phrase from the opening that you repeat or refer to at the end. You do want to avoid an ambiguous, preachy, or cliched ending and try to use concrete language to tie to the experience. So part of using concrete language is telling 
or showing rather than telling, excuse me. Um, telling does not involve the reader, it's boring. Uh, showing involves the reader. When you show, you bring the reader into the scene. Um, earlier in the semester, you have read um, T is for telling the truth, and this um, some of this information comes from that. Showing allows the reader to feel the emotions and the energy, so you want your reader to feel what you're going through in that essay. So you do need to focus, so don't try to do too much with your essay. Um, focus on a single theme, even if you might have a whole bunch of cool things that you want to include. If they don't point to that central idea or theme, you're going to have to let them go. Uh, don't get distracted, and of course, focus, focus, focus. So a personal essay is like giving a gift to your reader, and your aim is customer satisfaction. So when you give a gift, you think about what the receiver needs, not what you need, right? So um, a writer who thinks of self first is like the husband who gives his wife a skill saw because he thinks she'll enjoy it, all the things he can make with it. So remember to focus on the reader. So along with the skill saw, my husband last Christmas gave me a flashlight, which I have not used once, but my husband has used on many occasions. So he gave me a gift that was something that he really wanted. So that's an example of what you don't want to do with your essay. Okay, so essay details. This essay should be four to five pages long, so slightly longer than your descriptive essay. Of course, you're going to have to type it because um, you're going to be submitting it online. Double spaced, 12 point Times New Roman font. Include at least two sources. Now, these sources can be anything. We're not um, requiring that you use um, peer reviewed or scholarly articles yet. We'll be doing that with your next assignment. Um, so you can find something on the internet and include it in your paper. Make sure that your essay is following the MLA guidelines for format. And there is a screencast in course resources, which is up at the top of the weeks in the assignments category. And um, there's some MLA information in there to help you. If you feel like you're stuck or you're just not understanding MLA, feel free to ask me in the Ask the Instructor discussion forum. Or of course, the Writing Center is another great resource too. And here is the rubric for this essay. And um, this is what I will be evaluating you on with your assignment. And this is also available in the Unit 2 assignment um, document in the course. Well, I thank you for watching this screencast. And I hope this information was valuable and helpful in getting you started on this essay. Remember, to, when you're reading the readings for the next couple of weeks, to focus on how those authors are connecting their story to a larger theme or issue and see how you can make those same kinds of movements in your essay. I hope you all have a wonderful week and I look forward to reading your drafts. Thanks.